What's up, family? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power Double XI, J. Royce Films. I'm Jerry Royce Live, and you're watching The Red Room with Shay Samuels right here on Music Vision Television. That's right, MVTV-21.com. It's going to be awesome, y'all. So please share this file. It's going to be awesome. You know what's going to be? It's going to be lit. Rolling State, ready when you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of The Red Room. I am your host, Shay Samuels, and do we have an amazing, amazing show for you all today. So stay tuned. We have two amazing guests, and we have an amazing topic. First, we have Reverend Red in The Red Room. Y'all give it up. Right. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, it was a bit of a tongue twister, so we don't like take three. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Lady Crystal with him as well. They are a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful item. And I'm telling you guys, we are going to have an amazing conversation. So listen, today we are talking about the shifting. We are all going through it. Ecclesiastes 3 reminds yes. us that everything there is a season. Yes. We have to understand the power of the shift. So first, let me ask our guests, how are you both today? We are wonderful, yep. phenomenal. Yes, that's great. <laughs> and we in went, the yep. middle of a shift. Yep. Ooh, we went through so that freeze. Perfect. We went through that freeze last week. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we out of it now, like, whoo. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I'm originally from up north and kind of miss, I said I miss having the snow until something like this happened. And then I said, nope, I'm not interested in being up there. <laughs> It was like back to back, back to back, back yep. to back, back to back. So yep. um, I can't say that I, it's beautiful to look at. I guess. Yes, oh, yeah. it's beautiful. I'll watch it on TV. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now you can turn things on YouTube. If you want the fireplace, you just turn it on YouTube. Turn you it on. Yeah. You turn it on YouTube. And so I think I'll stick with the YouTube. Um, right. But thank you both for being on the show. We have a powerful discussion today. And, you know, yep. it's going to be amazing to see what comes out of this. And as always, I pray that it will bless someone watching it today. But today we're talking about the power of shift. You know, I did a message a long time ago, um, probably about a year ago. But I did a message on shift. And for some reason, it just came back on me today. And I was okay. thinking about how, you know, when I was younger, I used to drive a shift vehicle. And, um, and it had five shifts. And if you know how to drive a shift car, you mm -hmm. have to shift in order for you to go into the next um, gear. Yeah. In yep. order for you to actually go into the next, you know, like you, in order for you to drive without you burning your engine out, come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> All right, come on. Yes. Come on, you want your engine out, you have to shift. And so in this message, I was talking about how I would have to go in the first gear. And I had to learn how to use my pedal and brake at the same time right, to right. get to the second gear. And how many times did I burn out a clutch before yeah. I actually <laughs> learned it? right? Yep. How many times? And so the power of shift is, is just that. If you are not, um, not necessarily prepared, but if you're not shifting when it's mm -hmm. time, you are wow. risking burnout. Come on so now. We're going to talk about that today. <laughs> Reverend Red, I'm going to start with you. What do you have to say about the power of shift? Well, let me, um, the power of shifting is, is kind of, um, it, it's kind of scary. That's the number one thing. Whenever God calls you or asks you to shift because we have gotten so comfortable, mm. okay, we don't want to make that move because we don't know where we're going to shift to yes. or what's there. We don't want to make that move. Let's go back and let's take, this was Black History Month. Let's take slavery, uh -huh. right? A lot of slaves, I think they said like 70 to 80% of the slaves that were free didn't want to shift to freedom. Right. So yeah. They don't want to right. shift. They don't want to make that move. Yeah. You know, because they because of the unknown. Yeah. Many of us today, the enemy have us in bondage, mm -hmm. have us in a certain situation, mm -hmm. and God is calling you and opening the door for you to make a shift, to yeah. make a move. But because we don't know where God is taking us, 
Yeah. And, you know, God knows, but we don't know. Since God ain't told us and we don't know, <laughs> yeah. then we are nervous about the shift. Yes. How yeah. can we be nervous yeah. about where God is taking us? Well, here's mm. the thing. So you said that God, so, well, first of all, we, we all know there's a such thing as discernment. Mm -hmm. And so our steps are already ordered. Now, God might, have, might not have shown us the full plan, of course, because if God shows us the full plan, then why would That's we right. even need God? Why would we even mm -hmm. desire God? So he's not going to show us the full plan. But we just talked about this on another episode that there's a seed. I called it the believe seed on one of my ah, messages. Okay. There is a believe seed that is that is in all of us at the time that we're born. And so with that comes vision. And although we may not shift because we don't know what God has for us, right. the operative word is God has something for us. Right. Yes. So if we trust that God has something for us and we know and that belief seed in us says, whatever God has for us, it's good. Yes. It's time to shift. <laughs> That's right. Lady Crystal, what do you have to say about it? Uh, I can think about what made me shift. Mm -hmm. what what is it what happened you know and a lot of times we go through chaos mm -hmm. there there might be something um that causes us to shift and it yeah. might be um i remember driving my first um shift uh shift gear car and yeah. um i learned in the parking lot before i purchased the car because it was so much cheaper yeah and the throttle if i took my foot off the throttle i would jerk and mm -hmm. so there was a jerk in my life Ooh, um, when I good. lost the highest paying job that I had and I was sitting there crying saying, somebody is telling me I need to go to church. So we all have different throttle um, yeah, like actions that. that happen in our lives. And it could be a wreck. It could be a breakup. You know, mine was a loss of a, of a job mm -hmm. and it caused me to shift it caused yeah. me to seek the one that created me and yeah. so a lot of times we get stuck that throttle our throttle is caught we stall because yeah. of what happened you yeah. know because of the assault or because of the loss of job whatever yeah. that is sometimes you get stalled right. yeah. and you really should keep moving forward yeah. even yeah. though you got stalled even though that yeah. throttle went off and you got jerked around you that is your shift yeah that is your indication that a yes. shift has happened in your life yeah i love that you said that because here's the thing that i really have to understand even for me um when i was driving the vehicle like you said i learned on my own i didn't mm. know anything about a shift the car was <laughs> given to me my dad actually said, if you want the car, you got to get the brakes and you got to get a clutch. <laughs> and so I was determined to get a break in the clutch. I learned on the highway. What I used Whoa. to do is I used to keep it in neutral. I knew right. like what the car speed. So when, when Reverend Red said you get comfortable, here's how comfortable I got with the learning process. Mm. I used to keep it in neutral and right. I could feel the, the, the level of the car and That's what right. I was going mm -hmm. to do. Based right. off of the level, of, based off the rev of the car. So if you've ever driven the shift, you know that when you, and, and it was like, I got accustomed to what I heard. Yep. And so custom, I'm yep. going gear based off of what I heard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was tearing the car up or not. I just know that's where I learned on the highway. <laughs> that's what I learned. So I learned that I had to stay in neutral and then when it was time for me to drive, I would go into that. I would go, oh, I thought okay. I had it. I okay. thought I had it. Maybe a month later, that engine, that that thing was all burnt out. <laughs> and so like you said, Lady Crystal, we risk that burnout, that jerk. There's a jerking that happens yep. in our lives that's going to push us back into gear. That's and right. so the shift, one thing that I can say, you both know this. I'm going to come back to you, Reverend Red. But the shift is inevitable. Yes, Ooh, it is. Yes, yes it is. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it Reverend, is. Go ahead, Reverend yeah. Red. Yeah. yeah. Well, she forgot to tell you about the greatest shift in her life when God shifted over to me, when she met me, you know, but um, <laughs> we put that on another show, okay, on a marriage ministry show, you know, but yeah, but when, when I, I, um, the thing about shifting is that um, it's always a challenge. Yeah. It's always God knows, like I said, and we don't know. Right. You know, and. Right. I go back to even further back from slavery to the children of Israel yeah. when Moses came, right? 
when Moses came and you're about to shift now, but even when they were shifting, they had to go through some situation yeah. to get to the ultimate move and the ultimate yeah. shift of the yeah. promised land. Yeah. God has something somewhere for all of us to shift yeah. to, yeah. something better. But some, yeah. but because we are spoiled, mm. because we are comfortable, we think that's laying up here under Pharaoh <laughs> is okay, is comfortable. And why do we have to go through all that to mm. get to someplace better when we can just stay right here? <laughs> do i hear an accent oh, oh yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we, we can't we can't talk we can't talk we just like to get off the talk you know but we can't no, no, we do it serious right now. it came out when he got serious it came out <laughs> like i'm like wait a second yeah I have to turn around and find out if somebody yeah. was on the other side of me nah, nah, that's that's him. Him. Kingston, kingston jamaica Okay. <laughs> yes, in Jamaica. Yes, yes. I hear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, look, we are full of surprises on the That's Red right. Red That's Red right. Red hey, God Red shift Red me Red from Red Jamaica. <laughs> God shift me from Jamaica to the United States. Oh, my go. goodness. We are full of surprises. If you are just <laughs> tuning in, we are with Reverend Red on the Red Room and Lady um, goodness Crystal. 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 Lady Catherine. <laughs> He's throwing me off. I know who it is, but he. he <laughs> No with. dreadlocks, no dreadlocks, no, no dog skin. <laughs> no, right, you know. exactly. He A Jamaican with freckles. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Crystal, you said something too that was um, profound because in May 2020, I was with the company for about five years and I was making really good money there. And um, they, within the pandemic, they actually utilized an opportunity to downsize in the pandemic. And so my department that I managed was the first department to go. Wow. Of course, I was the first person to go. But I'm going to tell you, the day afterwards, God had already shown me in the month of February, really the month of October, to start saving different, right? And so mm -hmm. I didn't do that in October. Okay. But in February, it came back and I said, okay, well, I'm going to start saving differently. Here I am mm -hmm. thinking, I give everything to this job. I'm working the long hours. I'm doing everything I need to do. So there's no way that they would even have a reason to let me go. But you See. know what? There was already a plan behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. The shift was already in preparation. Mm -hmm. And what I had to do was be obedient to what I heard, which was to save differently. I didn't know why. I just knew I needed to. But once I heard it the second time, I was obedient to that. Oh, okay. The first time, I'm like, I'm going to be good. Because yeah. I've been on this company. Don't want to shift. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, I let, when, I, when I was let go, I'm going to tell you something. I realized that that was a shift. I realized that that was my push. So I don't even say terminated. I don't say let go. I say I was pushed. Because I realized, like Reverend Red said, I got comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I got comfortable. I realized that there were certain things that were beneficial to my ministry under one boss, but the players changed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. The players <laughs> changed. And when the players changed, the shift was inevitable. And yes. so here I was, I was comfortable. And when I got comfortable, God said, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm running a profitable business right now. Mm -hmm. I have a very successful ministry. And I understand now that it was because I decided, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even telling y'all the truth on the red room. I didn't decide. I was pushed into the shift. <laughs> yes. Come on. I was pushed into the shift. So Reverend Red, let's talk about that push when people are going against the current. And you you know you holding on to the pole and yep. the wind is blowing and yep. you trying to you trying to hold on to everything that you got. Yep. that's true. <laughs> trying that's to true. hold on to everything you got legs up in the air. Yes. and you just don't want to let go. But the shift being mm -hmm. inevitable. Talk to that person that's trying to go against the current, holding on to that pole and every yes. single thing that they have. And God is saying it's time to shift. And and somebody some some of your guests might get mad at me right now because I'm talking about like single ladies. That's still holding on to a man 13, 12, 15 years. My wife and I always talk about that. I'm like, what are you holding on to? You, you God is about to shift you. Some shifts are major, some shifts are minor. Come but on. every shift is important. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some shifts take you to another country, mm -hmm. to another state. Mm -hmm. Some them some shifters take you around the corner to another yeah. job. Yeah. So it, wherever God moves you. You, my wife always tell me this, baby, are you ready to move? 
as a preacher, you got to be able to shift, be able to move yeah. wherever yeah. God wants you. And sometimes I, I'm spoiled. That's why I can say this. I'm like, oh, baby, I ain't going nowhere. I'm stay right here <laughs> and minister right here. I was in South Dallas for the longest ministering. Hey, wow. God said, let's move north. And my wife kept saying that. And I'm like, well, I'm, this is good. I'm comfortable. We got our building. It's paid for. We are yeah. right here. God yeah. made, God uprooted us. And guess what? Shift. Yes. Okay, yes. we had to move and God has blessed the whole move and continue yes. to bless. So we have to do the same thing in our lives. Yes. You know, when God touch, when God speak, when God talk, stop listening to people. Yes. yes. Stop listening to yes. people. Yeah. And listen to God. And when she hears God, people say, well, no, girl, don't do that. Don't go out and get that business. Don't go out and write that book. Don't go out and do that, like that whatever. Okay. Let's keep and speak positive in your life. If God is asking to move, girl, you better move. Say, my man, you better move because God, I'm not going to be the one to hinder you from yeah. shifting and moving yeah. when you hear the voice of God. So it sounds like it's time to shift from those friends. <laughs> God will do that too. God will do that too. The whole circle needs to change. Yes. You know, yes. the primary thing here is that there is so much power in the shift. And because a lot of people are afraid, like you said, we're, we've gotten so comfortable with just being status quo. Here's another thing that we've gotten comfortable with, what it looks like. Yes. yes. We have so much in front of us with social media. There's so many people pretending to be something that they're not. And a lot of people see with their eyes, this person has shifted. Mm -hmm. And guess what it's because? The status changed. That's yes. right. That's right. Yes. Lady, Lady Crystal. The status changed. Yes. 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 So, yes. so here's here's what they see. So you now see you now you now see your friend who's like, I'm a homeowner. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it took for them to get it. That's you don't know right. what they went through. You don't know what what what, what they Stop cried about at night. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it now. Wow. Yes. Stop yes. it. You know, we um I, I when I told my husband it's time to move, yep. we were moving, God said for us to move from our house. Mm. We had been in our house for 17 years. Didn't want to move. So we we passed that halfway mark. And so I'm like, God said for, for us to move. And my husband's like, where are we moving to? I said, I don't know. But God <laughs> said for us to move. She started packing stuff. I'm the only I one. Home, she started packing. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm the only one in the house packing. <laughs> my son is like, my mama crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what she packed it for? We not moving. My son was like, "No, this is my house. You know, right. we're not moving." I'm like, God said for us to move, so He made us uncomfortable in our mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Things started shifting. Mm -hmm. Our house literally. actually, literally, literally started yes. shifting. And so I'm looking at cracks, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, you know, we gotta fix this foundation." And and God was like, "No, you need to move." move. You need to move. So when I said, okay, we're moving, it took three days. You didn't hear me. It took three days. Our house was on the market for three days wow. and we sold it. Wow. And then we were like, where are we going to move? It was in an uncomfortable time. We had a vacation and a basketball tournament mm -hmm. because we do a basketball ministry with um, underprivileged and overprivileged privileged kids we bring them together mighty king, okay, good. Mighty king I like basketball that. and so that some of them have never played with other races until yeah, they came I like on, that. never mm -hmm. interacted never spent the night over anybody else's house but that's another story but in the midst of that we had the trip we had the house of the 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 our house for sale we had to pack guess what we didn't have a place to go wow wow but God, yeah, and we moved into an apartment and we're like, people are going, you said status quo. People are going to look at us like, why are they at that age living in an apartment? They had a house. What happened? So a lot of times in this Christian walk, people are like, mm -hmm. um, you have to have this. You have to have this title. You have to have mm -hmm. this much. You have yes. to drive this kind of car yes. in order to be successful. And so it was looking like we were unsuccessful, yes. That's right. but we were in the shift yes. of God. That's right. Wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. Wow. 
Look, the two of you are blessing me. And I know that someone is watching this today and you may not have realized that you were in the midst of your shift. But if you've heard what we talked about, listen, you were in the midst of your shift. The shift is inevitable. You need to stop holding on to the pole. That's right. Let, let, let the wind just blow you. Like, let us blow it for you. Let, That's right. Let, yes. Let, yes. <laughs> let the wind just blow you because yep. it is inevitable. And here I am, you know, I, and I la I laugh while you guys were talking because it's like kind of you got to practice what you preach. You're talking and I've realized I'm in the midst of a shift. Mm -hmm. I, you know, while, while you're talking, I'm realizing I'm in the midst of a shift and for yes. me sometimes i'm like god another one you know i'm like right I'm right like, right, right, like right. An army brat sometimes because i'm always uprooted and mm -hmm. because i'm always moving and i'm always you know it's like when do i get a break you know i'm just i just want to i just want to settle <laughs> you right know? right but i realize that the shifts are inevitable um there's ever-changing environments around us um, a right. shift, like you said, uh, Reverend Red, you know, you got to look at changing your circle. Don't be afraid of right. because you grew up with these people right. and they were That's in high right. school with you. That's right. Come you on promise, now. You pink, pinky swear to be friends all your <laughs> life. You know, you guys did elbow spit, whatever you did. <laughs> Here, <laughs> our reality is that when you say yes to God, things are going to change in your life. That's right. I tell people this all the time. For some reason, we've been brainwashed to believe that everything of God is warm and fuzzy. But we go <laughs> on a battlefield. We're, we're on a battlefield. And that's not to scare the person watching today. Well, why would I want to follow God if I'm always on the battlefield? Mm. Here's the reality of the battlefield. You come out stronger. We you win. You come out colder. Look, go we ahead. Go lose. ahead, Reverend Red. Say it we, again. We, we, we win. That's the reality of the battlefield. Yes. We yes. we win. I don't care what the, the situation might look like. We win at Period. the end. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to tell you another thing about shift also. A lot of things, a lot of times, here's another problem we have with shifting. We are jealous of somebody else's shift. Mm. <clears throat> wow. Because they shift wow. was quicker. They didn't take as long to get where they are. It's taking me a long time. So instead of finishing the shift, let me go back to where I was. Okay. Wow. And so we get we we do shift envy. Okay. Mm. How, how how did Shay get on TV so right. quick? How did she get on that so right. quick? And we trying and we haven't there yet. God's supposed to be shifting us there. We not there yet. And people get jealous of someone else's shift instead of glorifying God and said, God, if you took her there, if you moved Jerry where he is, if you took my neighbor, my friend, guess what? I'm looking for you the same thing with, with me, but do it on your time, God. Yes. You know, yes. the children of Israel could have went a shorter route to get sure to the promised have. land. Yes. A mm -hmm. whole lot shorter route. They didn't have to do what they did. Yes. They said, why, why is Moses taking us, shifting us up there? Yes. We can shift down here and get a whole lot, be a whole lot quicker. Yes. That's not what God has for you. Yes. That's not the journey that God has yes. for you. Each one of us have our own different yes. journey. Absolutely. And you yes. know what that makes, Shay, when we have our own different different journey? It gives each one of us our own different testimony. Yes. See, yes. our testimony is not like your testimony. Yes. See what I'm saying? You oh, got a yes. different shift testimony than what we have. Yes. yes. You see, and that's what God is saying. So don't be envy of nobody yes. else's shift. No matter if it's yes. quick, overnight, you might like, boom. But isn't it quick? What's wrong with us? God has his time. He's working with you. You just let God do what he has to do in his time frame. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, it amazes me. It amazes me because the number one group of people that have the biggest challenge with the shift are the believers. <laughs> Look at that. Look, I'm about and to stand up see, and run around. Did you see Boy. their faces? <laughs> Yes, and why? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Yes. Because we are not oh taught that in church. We're taught that it's it's you're supposed to be rich and wealthy, and you have supposed to have all. Yes, quick. quick. Everything is supposed to be. You pray for it, and you get it. But when Jesus came, if I'm not mistaken, mm. he went from city to city. Yep. He went from place to place. That's shifting. Mm. He taught his disciples how to shift. They wow. shifted from disciples to apostles. They the come shift. On come on, come the on. shift right. happened. And he taught them mm -hmm. to come shift. On. 
He taught them to shake the dust from their feet. He didn't teach them to stay in one place. Nobody, he never told anyone wow. where in the mm -hmm. Bible mm -hmm. did he say, sit down and be still. He said, yeah. go. Yeah. Go. The yeah. Great Commission yeah. was for everyone to go. But people get comfortable. And, and in Moses' time, Moses was moving the children of Israel in what? In tents. Mm -hmm. There was nothing permanent in that Seven 40 years. years. Yes, yes. They were moving in tents. Now, when yes. God wants you to settle down, he'll give you a house yes. that mm -hmm. you did not build. He'll give <laughs> you uh, land yeah, that you yeah. didn't. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He, he yeah. shifts you. He's going to give you that fur coat that you ain't know was going to come out of that bedroom. Come on. Your photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to end with saying this. Like a caterpillar, a caterpillar is meant to turn into a butterfly. I did a study, and that study said that if a caterpillar lives past its life expectancy before turning into a butterfly, it will die. The caterpillar mm -hmm. is only um, designed to, to live at a certain weight. And living beyond the butterfly time frame, that season of turning into the butterfly, it is surely to die. So if you're watching this today, know that it is time for you to shift. You have yes. heard it here from the three of us, and we have Amen. been through our own shifts. We have our own testimonies. But at the end, Reverend Red said it best, we win. So I want to mm -hmm. thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank you both for being my guest on the Red Room. Thank Reverend you for Red having Red us. Thank, thank you for listen. having us. I really appreciate it. And I pray as always that this has blessed you, the viewer today. Yeah. I'm Shay yeah. Samuels, the host of The Red Room. And I want to thank you all for tuning in. And until the next uh, show on The Red Room, we will 